think about these things. So universal as um, all, so the, the strategic network, the affective network, the um, pattern recognition uh, network, all, um, all work together have, you know, kind of as a team to make learning accessible you know, possible for students. Um, so, universal design for learning and instruction is a theoretical framework that basically anticipates diversity as a norm. So, in other words, if you are developing um, an educational environment date based on universal design <coughs> theory, you expect to have a diversity of learners. And you're going to plan your environment to meet the needs as best you can of this diversity of learners. So that planning and delivery of instruction as well as evaluation is based on the idea that you're going to have um, diversity, heterogeneity uh, in learning, but you also want to present material and evaluate without comprom compromising learning standards, which sounds like impossible, right? But <clears throat> actually, uh, not, not, not necessarily. And, uh, <clears throat> And some of this, uh, some of the universal design work has been done a lot and, and studied a lot in post-secondary institutions, colleges, and universities because uh, there are, there, uh, colleges and universities are getting increasingly a more diverse group of students. Many more students that have diagnosed learning disabilities are going to college who have other learning challenges like attention deficit, disorder, and nonverbal learning disabilities. Plus, there are just a lot of students coming to post-secondary education that don't have that necessarily real classical education that everybody thought, you know, the, you know they don't come in neat little packages, you know, and so on. So, uh, this is, I can tell you, this is really challenging for post-secondary educators because uh, they, they don't, you know, the, say what you like about teacher training, but, you know, everybody who teaches in grades kindergarten through 12th grade is well aware of, you know, learning disabilities and different ways of, uh, you know, of, of approaching this, but you go beyond that in community colleges and regular colleges they don't have, they, they have none of that training. So I used to work with a number of community colleges uh, <clears throat> when I worked at Landmark College in, in Vermont. Uh, and uh, wonderful teachers, caring, as caring as any teachers mm -hmm. as I've ever worked with. But boy, they were baffled, you know, how do I do this, you know, so. Um, so. There are, um, so these are, so we're going to move toward some principles and so on. Basically, um, principles for universal design for instruction means we have to have equal access to learning. So if people are, you know, whether people are hearing impaired or visually impaired or have sensory motor disabilities, they uh, need to have the same kind of access to learning or can't read or many things. They have to have the same access to learning as everybody else does. And therefore, the materials, the learning materials and the information has to be, uh, has to be accessible. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we might need to move beyond our conception of, of textbooks, hard copy textbooks and note taking. And we may need to look into particularly all of the things that technology offers in terms of vo uh, speak, you know, text readers and voice recognition and uh, 
other other uh, other adaptive technologies and so on. And then there has to be built into the framework flexibility, flexibility in use, because uh, because we students may. Uh, be able to learn well and they may able, be able to demonstrate learning but they might need to do it in a somewhat different way or at least have choices of how they can show knowledge as opposed to just always the same you know three hour blue book exam uh, or whatever paper and pencil test etc and the information should be simple and intuitive that means really that the students need to know what they're supposed to do. They need to have a very clear understanding of what exactly it is that's required of them. And therefore, assignments should be broken down, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps micro-united with flexible deadlines um, and things like that so that there's no guesswork involved. So this is where some things like rubrics and, and checklists and other kinds of things are made possible. Um, then the, uh, <clears throat> we, the other, other parts to this is that we need to tolerate errors and learn from them so that mistakes can be uh, can be used not as oh, you know you flunked you're terrible, but to but to analyze and learn from. Therefore, multiple deadlines again, where students have a chance to have a draft and then then get feedback and revise it and get more feedback and so on. And um, then uh, also that that they should be able to accomplish these tasks without having to do things that are really uncomfortable or difficult. So that means maybe there have to be digital texts so that students can read the material and have it read to them, or they can write using voice recognition or take notes with a live scribe pen or whatever, but that, that, it's, that they can accomplish what's required uh, with, through some kind of uh, perhaps um, accommodation or, or whatever uh, without, you know, something that they can, through some way that they can actually do it, you know. And uh, that they should have an environment that's large enough for them to fit in if you're talking about somebody in a wheelchair or whatever. And then this last period, this one here, um, refers to uh, a universally designed educational environment should embrace the community aspect of learning, the social aspect of learning, and the instructional climate. Because, you know, learning is blocked by anxiety and fear. So if students feel isolated, um, uncomfortable with the instructor, not feeling comfortable asking for help and so on, learning, learning will shut down. So here we're dealing with um, a number of um, a number of principles that uh, that meet the needs of learning of everybody in general, you know, that that engage strategic networks, um, the affective networks and uh, the recognition networks too, and we want to think about that as we plan for teaching. And that's very, it's very from the mountaintop, I realize, but we'll talk a little more about what some of this actually means. There is a <coughs> wonderful organization uh, uh, that known as CAS, which is the Center for Applied uh, Studies in Technology, and if you Google cast.org and go to their website. I mean, it's, it's huge now. And uh, it, it, it's devoted to universal design for learning. But they have incredible resources for, um, to help instructors 
have, you know, they have a lesson planner, they have lessons that have been developed um, that you can access for different grade levels in science and math and literature and so on. And they're all based on uh, the <clears throat> these three principles, which means that we have multiple means of representing, of representation, meaning this supports recognition learning.